how to calculate SFT and BMT. In today's lecture, I will teach you how to draw shear force and bending moment diagram for a beam with an overhang. I will give you step by step instructions on how to plot these diagrams. Stick around till the end of the lecture to learn fully how to calculate these values. Hey friends, if you're new here, I am Dr. Javed Qureshi, a senior lecturer at a London University. This is a problem which I want to solve today. From A to B, I have a loading of 10 kN per meter. B to D, I have 5 kN per meter. And a point load of 8 kN is applied as well. Note that loading in AB span is far more than BD span. It is 10 times 6, which means 60 kN. On the right side, I have 5 times 2, 10 plus 8, 18 kN. This will mean that AB span is going to sag. Our first step is to find out reactions. On left side, I have a pin support which will have two reactions, horizontal and vertical. On right side, I have a roller support at B which will only have one reaction which is a vertical reaction. A pin support or a simple support can be thought of as a door which can rotate but it cannot move in upward direction, it cannot move in horizontal direction. That's the reason we just have two reactions, horizontal and vertical. As there is no horizontal load applied, so in this case, horizontal reaction is going to be zero. For finding reactions, I will be using three equilibrium equations. Summation of horizontal forces equal to zero, summation of vertical forces equal to zero, and summation of moment equal to zero. But before we find out reactions, we have to find out total load on uniformly distributed load on the left side and total load on uniformly distributed load on the right side, which comes out to be 10 into 6, 60 kN, 5 into 2, 10 kN. The sign convention is upward forces are positive, rightward forces are positive, and clockwise moment is positive. Summation of horizontal forces equal to zero. As there is only one reaction here, which means that horizontal reaction is going to be zero. Then I will use summation of moment at A equal to zero and summation of vertical forces equal to zero. Summation of moment at A equal to zero. First load is this UDL, which will create a moment clockwise with respect to A. And the distance is going to be three meters from here, which you can see over here. The second one is five times two, which is UDL here. It is at a distance of 7 meters from point A and it is again creating a clockwise moment. Then I will go to a point load which is 8 kN. 8 kN is again 7 meters away from point A and then VB which is a reaction. VB is creating anti-clockwise moment with respect to A and the distance from B to A is 6. Because of anti-clockwise moment, I have this negative sign here. If you simplify these values, you will get 51 kN positive. Positive means upward. Then summation of vertical forces equal to zero. The upward forces are VA and VB, which are positive, And downward forces are 60 kN UDL and 10 kN UDL and a point load of 8 kN. If you simplify this and put value of VB over here, you get value of VA as plus 27 kN. Because it's plus, which means that the direction is upwards. Now, this is a summary of all reactions found in this video. Uh, you will see HA is equal to zero, VA is plus 27, VB is plus 51. Then I will find out shear force diagram. For finding shear force diagram, I will start from left. At left, and I will sum up all the vertical forces. At A, you just have 27 kN, so that's why we have 27 over here. Then I move to point B. At point B, it is divided into two parts. One is just before roller support. Other is at roller support. Just before roller support, you will have 27. That is reaction due to A. Take away UDL. Total UDL is 10 times 6. So you get minus 33. That is just before roller support. And at roller support, you will simply add up this reaction 51 kN. Minus 33 plus 51, it will give you 18 kN newton at roller support and then i will move to point c and just before point load so 18 take away udl udl is five times one it is spread on one meter it will give me 13 kN newton at point c which means that that will include the point load as well so 13 take away point load 8 kN newton which is here i get 5 kN newton 
And then finally, I will move to point D where all forces must be equal to zero. When you have worked out these values, now it is a time to plot them. This will give us the visual representation of shear force diagram. These are the values which I worked out earlier. I will draw these reference lines. This is the shear force diagram. First value is 27. You plot this 27 over here. The second value is minus 33. As I have UDL, that's the reason UDL will always have inclined shear force diagram. Minus 33, then it goes down. And then I have 18 as well, plus 18. It means that again, it will go up. The reaction will cause it to go up. 18. And then I have 13. Again, I have UDL. So that's the reason the diagram is inclined. 18. And then wherever you have a point load, there will be exact jump in shear force diagram. 5 kN. And then finally at point D, I have 0. Once you've got all these values, then you can hatch this diagram to make it look really beautiful and fancy and professional. That's how it looks like when it's complete. And then you can call it as shear force diagram. My next job is to work out bending moments and then plot them into a curve. Step three is bending moment diagram. Now bending moment is a little bit tricky over here. Remember that wherever you have shear force equal to zero, bending moment is going to be maximum at that point. Here, the bending moment will be maximum at this point, and we have to locate uh, this point, and that will be our sagging bending moment. And at this point, we have hugging bending moment, but the moments are going to be maximum at these points. Our job now is to find out the position of this point. Alternatively, you can say maximum moment is equal to area under shear force diagram. So if I have value of this distance, then simply I can work out this area of triangle and that will be my maximum bending moment. That will give me maximum bending moment. That's the easiest way to work out bending moment from shear force diagram. If I blow up this diagram from here, I have this portion of shear force diagram over here. I will use similar triangles. So horizontal on left side divided by vertical on left side is equal to horizontal on right side divided by vertical on right side. I'm assuming that the distance is x. By cross multiplying, I will be able to simplify this. So 33x is equal to 27, 6 minus x. 33x is equal to 162 minus 27. You multiply this inside. And finally, if you bring this 27 here, it becomes 60x. And from here, value of x comes out to be 2.7 meter. This is the position of zero shear force. And this is also the position of maximum sagging bending moment. So there are two positions here. One is for sagging, other is for hogging. Hogging is like this, sagging is like this. Sagging means tension is at the bottom and compression is at the top. Hogging means tension is at top and compression at bottom. Most of the time we have hogging bending moments where we have fixed joints or where we have continuity of simple joints. Here at joint B, because it is continuous between two spans, that's the reason we have negative bending moment here. Let's work out bending moments now. At point A, bending moment is going to be zero. At point B, bending moment is not going to be zero because it is continuous over two spans. Because of continuity, it will develop negative bending moment. D is a free end and it will have zero bending moment. Let's work out bending moment at 2.7 from left, which was our zero shear force point. So 27 times 2.7, 27 is reaction. 2.7 is this point. This is the position of X, X. Then I will have 10 times 2.7. That is the total load up to this point. And then this is acting at 2.7 divided by 2. If you simplify it, you will get plus 36.5. Now we will find out moment at B as well, where you will have maximum hogging pending moment. At point B, you, if you take it from left side, it will be 27 times 6. That is clockwise moment. Take away moment due to this load. So 10 times 6 times 6 over 2, which is the distance from half of this point to B. And this will give me negative 18. Once I've got these values, then I can plot them on a diagram. I'm going to plot these two values on diagram. So let us see how we can plot these values. This is bending moment diagram. 
Our first value is maximum positive moment, which is 36.5. Our next value is minus 18, which is a hogging moment. And then you can shade this diagram to make it look beautiful. And once I've done everything, then this is time as bending moment diagram. These are the references which I've used to prepare these lecture slides. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more practical insights into structural engineering and beyond. Until next time, stay curious.